Hello guys and welcome back. You know, every time I do a video about Red Wing, it tends to do really well. So that tells me one thing, you guys are interested in the brand. So let's dive into the history of Red Wing, how they got from where they started off to where they are now, a few of their notable products, a few of my favorite pairs of boots that they make, and sort of just an overall history of the brand. Red Wing was the first company to make shoes specifically for the job that you were doing. So they made shoes for postmen, they made military boots, they made shoes for farmers, for factory workers, even 99 cent boots during the Depression era, so those people could have something to stand in while they did their jobs. They were also the first company to use a synthetic sole, pioneering things like the Christie Wedge, which was meant for farmers so they didn't track manure and dirt and mud all over the place while still getting good grip. But the story of Red Wing really dates back to 1905 in Red Wing, Minnesota. Charles Beckman couldn't find shoes to fit his lifestyle, so he made them himself, again becoming the first footwear company to design specific footwear to fit the job. He partnered with local SB Foot Tanning Company, and Red Wing was born. In 1912, they released their first boot called the Black and Brown Chief, which was actually made out of manure-proof leather, meant for farmers. I cannot find a picture of this anywhere. The only reference that I can find to this boot is actually in an old Red Wing documentary, which has some grainy footage of a guy sitting on a hill. Doesn't really show you much. You can tell that it's a pull-on boot and that it had... Uh, an image of a chief on the sole. I mean, could you imagine them trying to get away with that nowadays? It wouldn't happen. That's all I could find with this original boot. In the 1920s, Red Wing bought a bunch of Puritan triple stitch sewing machines. And as a matter of fact, they have a dedicated crew of maintenance workers whose job is to keep these things up. I mean, they're old machines. Parts aren't really readily available. It's their job to make sure that they're in good running condition. Now, some of my favorite boots from this era include the 9111, which was actually introduced in 1919. This is a work boot with a traction tread sole. When you think of a Red Wing boot, most likely this is the boot you're thinking of, and it's one that they still make a version of today. There was also the Oil King boot in the 1920s, which was a very tall boot made out of oil-resistant leather, specifically for the people who were working in the oil fields. And of course, who could forget the 99-cent boot, number 99, for Depression-era factory workers? Red Wing expanded their offerings during the boom of the 1950s and included models like number 101, the Postman Oxford. 1953 saw the introduction of the 877 hunting boot, which became known as the Irish Setter due to its beautiful red color. And of course, its smaller brother, the 875, which is the 6-inch version of the 877. In 1959, we saw the first Model 213 6 inch mock toe and its larger brother, the 214 8 inch mock toe. These are boots you will still see on the construction site today. And of course, during wartime, Red Wing made the Model 1088 Pershing boot, which they continued to make until 1965. There was the Model 8111 Iron Ranger, still popular today, which was made for the Minnesotan workers of the Masabi Iron Range. The 3140 Work Chucka, made with a non-marking sole, specifically meant for carpenters when they were working in finished homes. The Model 9016 Beckman Dress Boot. This is made with the most blemish-free leather from SB Foot Tanning, which they call Featherstone. In 1987, Red Wing acquired the SB Foot Tannery. This is why you'll find leathers on Red Wing shoes that you won't find anywhere else. The 1990s kind of saw a downturn for Red Wing. They started making their Irish setter boots, Basque, and work lines overseas. This resulted in a decline in quality for those models, and a lot of people, even today, will say, well, I had a problem with Red Wing in the past. They fell apart, they were uncomfortable, they were junk, and they haven't bought them since. In 2008, though, Red Wing started to turn things around, introducing their Heritage line, which was hearkening back to some of the products that made the company great to begin with. And these were products that were made with uh, upscale leather, with the more attention to detail, the way that they used to be made. So, of course, there's the Iron Ranger, there's the Mock Toe, there's a bunch of other models in there which are absolutely beautiful. Of course, you do pay for them, and there's quite a difference in price when it comes to the Heritage line versus the regular line. For example, one of the most common questions that I get asked in regards to Red Wing is what's the difference between their regular 6-inch mock toe and their Heritage Line mock toe? There is a little bit of a difference. The Heritage Line uses a Norwegian style welt and it has a lower profile sole. One of the models which is really polarizing is the Wabasha boot. This is model number 9185 and this is hand sewn in Maine. It's a mock toe, but it's a little bit different. It's not a work boot, it's more of a casual boot. I think they're really cool, but I know people who can't stand them. 
Another model which I like is the 8188 Pecos boot. Now this is kind of a hybrid between a work boot and a cowboy boot style pull-on. It's a really cool look, still available today. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, there is definitely a huge interest in Red Wing today. A lot of people who I've worked with out in the field will wear nothing else besides their Red Wings. And a lot of their models, I mean, they really set the trend for other companies to come along. So they have their place in history. They still are making a good product today. And actually they still make 60% of their products in the US. The national average for a US company is like 2%. I know that Carhartt hit 10%. 60% is nothing to sneeze at. And of course they do have their, their cheaper lines like their works line, which they make overseas. And they're really meant for more of a uniform type of thing for people who have to have something to wear, which is usually supplied by their employer. They have those lines out there, but really when it comes down to it, the Red Wing Heritage line especially has become the darling of many people who like to dress this way and appreciate the heritage. And you know, for me, I wanna be able to put on some boots that look cool and not feel weird if I wanna hop on my motorcycle or do some workout in my garage or something like that. My footwear shouldn't get in the way of my lifestyle. And really, Red Wing is perfect for that. So guys, I really wanna know what you think about Red Wing. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see here, think about subscribing. Why not? It's free. Anyway, I'll catch you next time.